Carl, thanks so much for joining us. I think it was about 98 that uh, in an interview you said that one of the things you really liked with uh, acting was getting a script and finding the character. Was that the case with this film, given that you know, it was an existing franchise? Uh, no, not at all. Uh, you know, uh, we were pretty blessed on this. Um, I, I was, uh, to say the least, a little bit apprehensive having, being a, a long-term Trek fan uh, coming into... Um, uh, before I'd read the script, coming into this um, and, and being concerned that what was what they were going to do was not going to um, necessarily honour what Gene Roddenberry had created in the 60s, but I was really, really um, blown away by the, uh, um, I, I, I guess, the, uh, the accurateness of, of what Robert um, Orkey and, and, and Alex Kurtzman had done. I mean, they'd clearly researched uh, um, the entire Trek world and spoken to the fans and when I read the script uh, it was a real page turner and it was character driven and to me that's what Star Trek was always about more than science fiction it was always to me more about a cult of personality about this wonderful group of of people from different cultures thrown together, together and in Gulliver's travels, sort of travels fashion sort of slung across, across the universe and you know, thrown up against uh, all sorts of uh, sort of ad adversaries, and uh, I really felt in reading the script that the the very essence and spirit of of what um, Mr. Roddenberry had created back in the '60s was alive in in in, uh, in present. So, but you you'd said that you like to find a character from scratch to find out you know through the script almost. I think you used the term back then of uh, being almost like a Sherlock Holmes exploration to mm. discover the character. Yeah, well, I mean, every character's like that, and, 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 and um, portraying, Leonard McCoy portraying Bones was no different to that. There are doors that you have to go through, um, whether it is finding where the voice of the character is centred, uh, um, finding out what makes him tick, what, uh, what uh, you know, what type of, given a certain stimulus, what what extent of reaction is, is, is he going to get out of, out of this situation? Um, to me, what, I, what attracted me to the character, the aspects that I focused on uh, in finding the character was I concentrated on the, uh, this sort of irascible, sort of cantankerous, often grumpy, appalling bedside manner uh, that was the outward surface of the character, but underneath that it's his actions that speak volume. Underneath that, you have the most altruistic, caring, loyal friend who is morally centered and uh, is, is to be judged by, by his actions. And, uh, and uh, to me, as an actor, that was uh, the most appealing and interesting uh, uh, sort of polarity and dynamic to explore. So one of the scenes that I think really helped to find the character tremendously was the scene when you first got on the shuttlecraft. I remember when that came in the filming. That was the very first day we shot. Really? Because mm -hmm. it, it felt to me like you established that character very strongly in that one scene. It had uh, a freshness to it, but it, I could see, um, and I guess one of the risks would be to end up doing a caricature or an impersonation. But I think that you really nailed it. And I think there were actually aspects of cadence that really resonated. Was that deliberate? Uh, no, you know what? I, I have to be honest. It was it was not easy uh, at all because, as you just said, the danger is that you do an imitation. The danger is you do a caricature. But as a long-term Trek fan, I felt that I did not want to. If I was not in the film and I wanted to go and see this, and, and, and I go and see this film, that I would like to see some some continuity, some semblance, some essence, some spirit of. Of what the original character was, and 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 that's the t the tough thing when you're an actor, is not to do an imitation, not to do a caricature, but to somehow internalise the sort of spirit and essence of uh, of of what Mr. Kelly had done so wonderfully well for for forty odd years, and present something that's also new and fresh. Because it, it didn't feel like an impression, mm -hmm. but it, it did feel like you'd got some of the cadence down and some of the beats down. I was wondering whether that was deliberate or you just found that. Um. To me, I, it really kind of felt like a process of osmosis over 30 years of loving, uh, loving Trek, loving the original series. Uh, I, um, 
it's difficult for me to articulate how I wound up where I got to, but um, I did it by, by feel. In terms of this film, what sort of direction did J.J. Abrams actually give you? Did he give you any particular directions on yeah, how to approach Yeah, J.J. Abrams is a phenomenal director. I mean, I've been blessed to work with uh, Quite a, few good a, a, a few good directors, um, Paul Greengrass. J.J. M m really reminds me of, uh, of Peter Jackson in the sense that here's a director who is, is truly brilliant. He, is, um, he has all these elements of film at his fingertips. Um, you know, he knows about moving the camera, the light, sound, he knows how to market a film, he knows so much about film lore, but then on the other side of that, he can, he knows about moment to moment character beats. He knows about, uh, you know, he, he can throw you a funny line or give you a little key into a scene that you just go, oh yeah, that, that's it, that's genius. And, you know, we're really blessed to, uh, to, have, uh, to have him, um, you know, helm a ship.